So we are back with one of my favorite uh, archetypes. Water. I, yeah, I don't really know what this deck list is at this point, considering it contains, what, Mermail, Atlantean, Marine Cess, Deep Sea, and even technically Ice Barrier. This deck list contains about the same amount of art types as people currently sliding into your mother's DMs. Yeah, I'm not really sure I'm going to name this deck list, as honestly, it's... Water doesn't exactly sound that appealing, but hey, the title of this video is for me to worry about. As for you guys that clicked on this video, just go enjoy it already. <laughs> So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before we get into the deck list, if you guys are enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, so apparently about 35% of you are watching this or even subscribed to the channel, meaning 65% of you haven't even clicked that button yet, despite most of you actually being returning viewers. So if you guys are enjoying this content and will see more videos just like this in the future, especially around the latest box, I still have a whole bunch of videos planned, including things like Monarchs, may maybe some Necros, or even that other new art type that draws like 7,000 cards, whatever this thing call this or a sock tick or whatever the hell it's called i'll give it a try i'm not sure how that's going to go but we'll try it anyway so if you do want to see any of that content remember to leave a like consider subscribing and yeah let's jump into this deck list so this deck list it's not a whole lot to talk about as a lot of the cards in here are obviously pretty old now as you know what water or water exceeds or whatever you want to call it does by now but there are quite quite a few new things to go through with the main new addition being your deep sea sentry this card is fantastic for the deck and it's probably going to be mandatory in all water builds from now on as this card is really god damn good being summoned off of your deep sea diva or even searched off things like your dragoons or off your um, aria so this card when it is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster effect can make one of your opponent choose one card in their hand and banish it face up until the end phase so already its starting effect is a hand rip which is pretty goddamn good it's not the best hand rip as it's not a random one so your opponent actually gets to choose the card they get rid of so normally they just choose some like garbage cosmic cyclone or something which is dead versus this deck anyway so not the greatest hand rip, but it's still a very useful effect, and it's not even the main effect of this card. The main effect is the second one, where if this card is special summoned, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard, then target one level 4 lower water monster in your graveyard except itself, and just add that card to your hand. Which is so goddamn good later on, as it just means you're going to be recycling a bunch of cards. You'll see during the gameplay, this comes up a lot. It's a really, really good summon, especially considering you have a card like your coral and enemy that can bring it back during well just whenever you like later on it just recycles a lot of cards so once your field's been completely wiped you can generally just go into like a deep sea diva or something summon out your sentry bring it out bring it back with your coral and enemy or whatever you like and yeah it just feels goddamn good all right the other new additions are of course going to be your deep sea artisan this card it came up a little bit but in general if you don't want to run this card you don't really have to it's just sort of a nice sort of addition it didn't feel that great but I don't know, it's worth trying anyway. So this card, when it is added from your deck or graveyard to your hand by the effect of a water monster, lets you just look at your opponent's hand, which isn't the greatest effect. It's nice to know what your opponent's playing, of course, but in Duel Links, when a lot of different characters have certain skills around them, you can generally sort of know what your opponent's playing anyway. But it's nice to know if you have to prepare for things like Kaijus or Book of Moons, or just to know what your opponent's playing in general, because sometimes they're just random ass Orcus builds with random characters, so it can come a little bit. But the main effect of this card is also a bit of a follow-up effect, where if this card is special summoned, you can set a top card of your deck to the graveyard, then target a level 4 lower water monster in your graveyard except itself, special summon it but negate its effects. So generally, later on if you have absolutely nothing left in your hand, you can just and you have just except a one diva, you can summon your diva, summon this thing out from the deck, and you'll be able to special summon something back from your graveyard and get a good bit of resources going like that way. So it's sort of a good latest game sort of a card, especially if you've already milled it or discarded it already. But that's mostly all it's generally going to be used for. And like I said, it's not very mandatory in this deck. You don't necessarily have to run it. Alright, the other new addition is Deep Sea Aria. And this card is... It performed a lot better than I thought it would. Because a lot of people, when they saw this card, they assumed it wouldn't be that great. Because they just assumed it's just a Diva Searcher. And we don't really need a Diva Searcher in this deck list. When, of course, your Dragoons can search for it already. And you have a draw 3 from Moray. So generally, you get this card every game whenever you want it anyway. But it actually overperformed more than I thought it would, because this card, if you think of it as more of just a Sea Serpent Searcher, which is what it is, 
it's a lot better of a card because it means you can set up certain hands for yourself to use during your opponent's turn. So for example, when you have your croc on the field, which you can have most games, this card's going to be discarding a bunch of cards. So you want to make sure the cards in your hand are really, really good discards. Would that be a hand rip from your sentry, or a pop from your infantry, or a back row removal, or whatever you like. It's just good to be able to set up whatever hands you like, and this card really, really helps with that on top of being a good diva searcher as well. So, pretty decent card, performed a lot better than I thought it would. And the final new addition is Deep Sea Repertoire. This card, you don't have to run it at all. I literally never used it. It doesn't really serve that much of a place in this deck list. It has a lot of synergy with it, because basically this card, it gains 800 attack by discarding a card, so you can discard any of your dudes or whatever. And then it's, when it's removed, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can bring back a level five or higher water monster from your graveyard, which I guess is pretty useful because you have a lot of level 5 or higher water monsters in here. But in general, it just didn't really come up. It's pretty easily summonable if you want it, since Diva plot can summon out your level 3 and there it is. But unless you just want a particular search maybe, maybe your opening hand didn't have your Abyss and you're just going for a turn 1 wanting to discard this for a search or something. I, I don't know, it's not that useful. So if you want to cut this for another Xyz monster, like an extra Abyss Dweller, or some other random ass water monster, or water link monster, the star monster, or starfish, whatever the hell it's called, feel free to do that. You don't have to play this card at all, but the only really one that's mandatory, and the only thing you really have to play in this deck list, is going to be your Deep Sea Sentry now. Alright guys, that's going to do it for the deck list for the video, let's jump into some actual gameplay. Alright, so today I've got six replays to share with you guys, all of which were gathered in Platinum. Keep in mind, the season literally just reset, so all these guys were probably Legend or King of Games last season, although some of these players, as you'll see, probably weren't actually, uh... Well, you'll see, they're not exactly the most, uh, highly skilled players I've ever played against. But this decklist overall, if you guys are wondering about win rates or whatever, it was actually fairly decent, although that's not really a shock considering Water has already been, like, it's always been a really decent deck list, and I don't think this is going to, like, change it all that much. It makes it maybe slightly better, especially that one Deep Sea card, which will show during this replay, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, there's only really one super good addition to this deck list. The other stuff just sort of optional if you feel like playing it for a bit of fun or to spice up your Water deck list. But yeah, this deck list thing I won, like, 8 out of the 10 games I played with this particular list, and with all the other different variants of this list, or this deck list I played, they all felt really, really good, it all felt roughly the same. So, it doesn't really matter how you built this deck, as long as you're keeping sort of the core components the same. Because Water Exceeds is just Water Exceeds, you're always, always going to be summoning out your Abyss Dwellers, and Abyss Dwellers and an Orcus meta does feel pretty good. This guy, for some reason, summons Void Ogre versus this deck, which is a very interesting choice, considering I don't really run that many spells, and no Water Exceeds does, but anyway. Or Water, whatever you want to call this deck. He decides to Chalice this monster for some reason, which I'm like, okay. That's like one of the worst targets to Chalice in this deck, but good on you, buddy. And now he has absolutely zero disruption I even care about, so... Summoning my Sentry from the deck, which is the actual really good new addition to this deck. This thing I think will be in every single build of um, Water from now on, because this card is fantastic. Summoned it out from the deck, gets to mill a card, then add a card from my graveyard back to my hand. So, very very strong. Generates a lot of value. And even has a nice effect to use during your opponent's turn, where if you get rid of, it, get rid of it using a um, Water effect, sending it to the graveyard, you can banish a card from your opponent's hand, so just rip a card out of your opponent's hand. Feels pretty good. Alright, summoning my Trish, banishing all that shit on the field. Very good versus Rocket, because we don't want to destroy their cards. Although, Abyss Dweller deals with their destruction effects in Grave anyway, but you get the picture. Alright. This guy's very, very dead, but I decided to do a bit of flex in here. Summoning my enemy, can summon out another card from the graveyard, and he just concedes before I can go any further. Alright. Moving on. Okay. So I forgot what this guy was playing. Was this the Mako player? No, this is the hero player. Yeah, this was a uh, a pretty goddamn good replay as well from my point of view. I got to set up a pretty decent board. So discarding, special summoning, getting a search, of course. By the way, this Dragoon card is the main reason that um the new spell card for the decklist, that the Sea Serpent Searcher, really isn't all that isn't super good. It's fine in the deck list, and as you'll see from the replays, I do use it quite often. But it's not really, like, a necessary card or anything, just because we already have a searcher for D.Va, so we don't really need another one. <laughs> it's pretty easy to search D.Va in this deck list already, so... Yeah. Especially with the draw three for Moray already, it's like, you're going to search- you're basically going to grab D.Va every game. 
be the spell card. So I'm basically going to set up my hand for the next turn, giving me some really good croc targets. So I use my deep sea aria to grab a copy of my sentry. That way during my opponent's turn, I'll be able to remove via destruction, I'll be able to remove a card from their hand, and I'm able to target back row as well. So I've got plenty, basically I've got the entire arsenal. I've even got a, a discard for a search as well. So whatever I feel like doing during my, during my opponent's turn. I opt to go for my Abyss Dweller by um, putting the search below it, which I can now use during this turn to search for my infantry. So now I have another pot from hand as well. Alright, some to Stratos. Don't care. For some reason, I'm pretty sure he Book of Moons now, which is weird. Like, he is late booked. I don't know why he didn't start with that. Doesn't really matter. It means I don't have a free pop on his card, so sure. And of course, because I got my Deep Sea Sentry, banish a card from his hand. The main downside of the sentry's banished though is I'm pretty sure it lets your opponent choose the card, which is not the greatest, but any sort of um, hand looping is pretty decent. Alright, Dragoon getting a search as well, grabbing of course an Artisan apparently. This card, because added to hand via a water monster effect, can look at my opponent's hand. Not the most fantastic effect, but it's fairly decent when you uh, want to know what your opponent's playing and have like because a lot of characters, obviously, they're playing random ass skills and you don't really know what they're playing, so you have to, like, is this Orcus or not? And if it is Orcus, you're probably going to set up your Dweller and be pretty good to go. But it's nice to know what your opponent's playing, so sometimes you can use that effect to look at their hand. It also sort of lets you know whether or not it's worth it to, um, use your new guy's effect to hand rep a card out of their hand. Because they've already got, like, a billion starters in hand, there's no real point hand repping anyway. Alright. Next up, and this one must be the Mako player. Certainly is. Alright. And it was our rank up as well. So this guy was playing a deck list that's a, uh, a little bit out of date now. At first when I saw this I was like, oh it's one of those bots, because a lot of the uh, bot counts uh, play this Golden Castle of Strongberg shit. But no, he was an actual player. It was actually, an, it was literally a player. But anyway, for some reason he just chose to play this in current year. Anyway, so of course, going to be discarding this to pop a card, targeting the card, the only one that we really can destroy because it protects the field spell. He cracked down to me, which I'm so thankful for because I'm like, yep, I can just get rid of that shit instantly. Going straight into my crop, getting a card draw. Hitting a perfect um, top deck, because this card, when I drew it, I'm like, perfect, now I can now search for my infantry and be able to destroy another card on the field. Getting rid of both the field spell and the crackdown in one. And from there, I'm pretty sure he just concedes, because yeah, I'm just going to lethal him outright. <laughs> Not sure why you'd play that deck list in current year, but hey. Props to him for trying something, I guess. Oh, okay. So this is a, this is it's this is such a weird matchup because this deck list sucks against itself because you cannot play through Dweller. Literally, all your cards, all your discards, they don't work because they're effects that activate in graveyard. So all the Atlanteans dead. Your Abyss Guide is dead. This card Search is dead. All these cards are dead right now. So it's like, oh, great. It's so weird. Like its own counter is its own matchup. Alright, so Moray, Moray, you're gonna grab three cards, toss or two cards, toss them in the deck, draw three. And then we're just gonna try to go for an Abyss Well, There's not really a whole lot I can do, because yeah, I'm locked out of using any of these graveyard effects. Thankfully though, I do at least have this card's extra normal summon, so I can go into an Abyss Dweller of my own. And then when I pass the turn, I'm actually not gonna swing in here, because I want to Abyss Dweller him during his turn, so he can't use any of his graveyard effects. Tries to swing in, I can now reduce his um I can now use my card's effect to potentially pop his, forcing him to use his Dweller, which then reduces his own attack, forcing him to use Book of Moon. Alright, summoning back, making a copy of course into the Link Monster to then revive from the grave. Making good use of the Artisan here, because when Artisan's revived, it can then send a card on top of the deck, special summon a card back from the graveyard. And because we actually milled a card, um, milled a card with this, we hit a it hit the deep, deep Sea Sentry, so I get to banish a card from his hand. So keep that in mind, these are um, Deep Sea cards. If they mill a card from the top of the deck, which they always do, you're going to be able to activate any of the water monsters you send to the graveyard via that effect. So that includes things like your Atlanteans as well, as well as the um, infantry cards. Or even your Dragoon card gives you a search as well, so... 
Alright, where are we up to? I think we're up to number four now? I think we're up to number four now. Alrighty. This guy was playing the Gandora. I definitely flexed a little bit too hard here. I definitely was huge misplaying going on. Because I made myself very susceptible to a Book of Moon, but it's fine. Or even a Chalice. So I started off doing some normalish stuff, grabbing the um, dupe with the discard, grabbing my diva. Gonna be grabbing a copy of my infantry for a discard during his turn. For my croc. Then off my top deck of my croc, rather than doing my standard play and going into Dweller there, I drew another special summon, so I was like, I'm just gonna do a bunch of more special summoning just because I can. Completely pointless and made me very susceptible to Book of Moon, because I only left, ended up with just the uh, croc on the field as my only real disruption. But it's fine, what could go wrong? We think he's playing Gandora anyway, because it's 30 card deck playing Yugi, so it's probably Gandora. And if he booked this or Charles, this would be pretty bad. But it's fine, he's playing um, Orcus Gandora, so we just activate our Dweller, and we're good to go for the rest of the game. And we absolutely crush this poor man. Not only can he not use his graveyard, but he summons his Gandora. We're gonna pop that, pop the card next to it, and banish the final card in his hand. Absolutely decimated. No cards on the field, all cards on the graveyard are locked from using their effects, and his hand got completely removed as well. Alright. That was like optimal sort of gameplay for this deck, I guess. Right, this guy was playing the, obviously, Jack Atlas deck, playing the Resonators. Nothing too exciting going on there, although I'm pretty sure the first card he summoned was a little bit silly. Alright, summoning my Dragoon, getting a search, grabbing Diva, of course. Normal summon Diva, special summon your, your Atlantean. If you act to normal summon, go into Croc, normal summon, I'll get your draw first. Normal summon, my dude, Territory of the Sharks, Abyss Dweller. You know the drill by now. Alright. Get hit by a <laughs> Santa Claus. I assume he's playing this because it's a fiend, and it's like it's a kaiju but fiend, so like we played in the fiend deck, but sure I guess. <laughs> Actually got Santa Claus. Anyway. We're still completely fine though, so we still gotta pop off Dweller, so if he doesn't have another book or a chalice, we're good to go. So we're going to be popping the Tuna Monster, because of course if you pop the other card, he might have that level 4 special summons itself, and then you're just letting him Synchro Summon, so best to get rid of the Tuna. We'll be attaching with Dweller to pop a card. For some reason he uses Compulse early on a card that had already had nothing underneath it anymore. I'm not really sure why he did that. Targeting the back row, removing it. So now he's only got one back row left, and it's not even likely to be anything, so I'm just sort of just going to full play. Popping, going for my enemy. Aria giving us a search, he Cosmic Cyclones, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, he can see he's after this. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's replays, hope you guys enjoyed them. Remember, if you are interested in seeing any more new box contents, I still have a whole bunch planned on the latest pack, including things like maybe Monarch, or your Necros, or whatever that other archetype is that draws 7 cards. I'm not really sure how that deck list is going to go, but I'll at least try to give it a try before considering making a video on it. But I do have a whole bunch of plans around the, um, rest, of the bo rest of the cards in the box. So if you want to see any of that stuff, remember to leave a like on this video, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out. And yeah, hope to see you in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.